Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Northwest Liberty News. Picking the lock on the shackles of tyranny. The machines are going to fail. And the system's going to fail. The past is past. The future's now. Don't look at me. I think these people are completely nuts. Sometimes trouble just follows a man. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Can't you stop your lips from flapping for two little minutes? Because I'm white. I'm a man. I'm sensitive. I need to feel loved. I need to be desired. Man, I'm rapidly becoming a big underground success in this. That's a question of methods. Everybody wants results, but nobody wants to do what they have to do to get them done. And now, coming to you live from Kalispell, Montana, brought to you by Northwest Liberty News, it's Montana Gazette Radio, with your host, James White. Okay, I'm your host, James White. Thanks so much for joining me here on Montana Gazette Radio on this first day of November. Can't believe the uh, the uh, the days are going by so fast in this year, and we have uh, a huge week coming up this next week, uh, especially when it comes to uh, elections. There's a kind of a big one going on, and uh, we um, we are <laughs> eagerly anticipating what's to come because I think we're going to see some uh, we're going to see some things that I don't have, I've already seen things I can't believe. So I think it's just going to get worse or better. Uh, it depends upon where you're looking, what uh, angle you're looking at it from. But um, well, one thing's for sure: we we uh, we are in a different kind of time than we've ever been in before. And uh, we um, we're here at Montana Gazette Radio and Montana Daily Gazette, trying to dish out the truth uh, as the best we can. And we do certainly do appreciate your support. Um, so we have a two-hour show today. Here and I have another show at noon. But uh, this show here this morning, we're going to play a video, uh, an interview that I did with Brad Cheetah yesterday regarding the, um, the vote tampering potential with the, uh, the vote, the ballots. Um, I had a, someone sent me a documentation, a document. Well, uh, Brad Cheetah, and you'll see the document, has his, has his attorney send this out um, to the Elections Commissioner, I believe, in Missoula County. Uh, what was understood for me from the conversation I had, and that's the reason that prompted the uh, the letter, and we're going to play the video here in a minute, the interview with Brad. But uh, the uh, the voter who wanted to change their vote was told by the election commission that they could just open the envelope, cross out the old name, put the new name in, initial it, uh, put everything back in the envelope, and just put uh, user put initial just your initial, not sign, and sit, put user user altered ballot or user updated ballot, something like that. Which, of course, leads the, you know, begs the question, why couldn't anybody just open any ballot and make any change to any vote, seal it back up again, just put an initial, because your initials are not, as I point out in the interview, your initials are not on file with the election commission. Your signature is. So your signature originally is on the document, and then if somebody opens it up, it could be anyone. It could be anyone that gets that, that ballot, opens it up, changes it and just puts an initial on there i mean you don't have what do you have to you don't have any uh anything to to really check that against so uh and it's 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 a has a tremendous potential for voter fraud and we know that um that is going on quite a bit we see that going on across the country with ballots being left in ditches thrown away um you know, you name it. I mean, pretty much they've come up with about every method you can think of. They've even employed inside people inside the post office for crying out loud to work with them. Um, and you, I'm sure you saw this thing that happened the other day with, with uh, Tucker Carlson where UPS, um, the UPS uh, lost his data that he was sending. And apparently somebody in the UPS, uh, they had someone on the inside that broke in there and took that that thumb drive out of the, out of the package. So this is serious business, folks. Um, this is serious business. This swamp is deep, and uh, it's it's in a lot more places than you can imagine. But uh, we are moving fast towards draining that swamp uh, in uh, in this country and certainly here in Montana as well. We've got our eyes on that also, and we're not going to just let Montana go. 
Uh, there's a couple of stories we're going to cover here. We're going to have Commissioner Panocci on next hour talking about the coal strip power plant thing in Northwestern Energy is backed out of the deal. We're going to talk about that. And uh, a couple other uh, articles we're going to cover here. We've got the Yellowstone County man was uh, removed from his uh, from the football game yesterday, uh, forcibly. And uh, I uh, reached out to him, talked to him, and Stephen James is his name. The video you can you can find it. We're going to cover that here in a minute after this uh, after the interview with Brad Sheeta, uh, Montana Daily Gazette. You can see the article there and the video uh, about this guy was they were going to actually handcuff him. They were going to handcuff the guy for not wearing a mask outside at the football game, standing outside the fence around no one. They came up and hassled the guy and with the sheriff, tough guy, came up and hassled him and said, uh, we're going to, we're going to, uh, uh, whoever this guy is, this uh, health uh, hash, whatever this guy's name is, is that the guy? Um, I don't know. He's the athletic director or something. Real, 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 you know, throwing his weight around, using the cops to, to, to threaten the guy to get off the property, this private property, his school. Anyway, we're going to cover that in a minute uh, after this uh, interview uh, with Brad Cheetah. Uh, the tyranny is running rampant here in Montana, as it is nationwide. And, you know, the best way, folks, to fight tyranny is to expose these people as tyrants. That's, how, that's, the, best way to expose, that's the best way to expose tyrants. Force them to act like tyrants. You force them to act like tyrants. And that's what's happening. You're seeing this. You're seeing Bullock coming down on private businesses and, 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 and having his, you know, the, the, the mask police out there turning people in to try to get their businesses closed down. These are statists. That's what these people are. And uh, we don't want them around here. I can tell you that right now. I, I'm, I can speak for most freedom-loving Montanan and to tell you that we don't want you around. So we're going to play this video real quick. We're going to play this uh, interview here with Brad Cheetah. And then when we come back on the other side, we're going to cover some news and information. And then we'll have, uh, we'll have Commissioner Panocci here on the line. We'll have him call into the, uh, call into the show here. Uh, after uh, at the nine o'clock hour so uh this is about a 30 minute interview here with brad cheetah uh, I, I conducted it yesterday with him and uh we'll uh we'll, we're going to be open up the phones i believe for commissioner panocci second hour but let's go here to this uh to this video here we'll be back after this video here and uh with more commentary and news on montana gazette radio montana daily com, montana gazette radio.com of course the flagship northwest liberty news.com thanks Hi, this is James White from Montana Gazette Radio. Thanks so much for joining me here today on the show. Uh, it is the weekend, 1031, 2020, and I'm joined by Brad Cheeta, representative for Montana HD 97. And let me give Brad a proper introduction. Brad Cheeta is a third-term legislator and was the majority leader in the 2019 legislature. Brad is on the Appropriations Committee for two terms and has leadership experience. He is also on the House Rules and Education Committees. Brad Cheetah, thanks so much for joining us once again here. Actually, I think it's your first time on Montana Gazette Radio. You've been on EIV Radio a couple of times. It's your first, your first time around here on Montana Gazette Radio. Thanks so much. Absolutely, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. And I, I did notice the change in the logo, and I think it's a, a great upgrade. Not that I have any uh, any issues with EIV because you've always been a consummate professional. So it's just it's great to see a new logo and, and kind of an expansion of what you're doing with uh, with your. Um, uh, information services, both uh, in print and uh, the radio media. Well, you're very kind, Brad. Thanks so much. Uh, we're just trying to work hard for liberty, you know, just like you. We just want we just want to be free. That's all. We just want to be Absolutely. free and uh, and uh, free of government control and free to just be who we want to be. Uh, you know, as and that's I think you're fighting for the same thing. And you know, one of the ways to be free is to have a free and open election without shenanigans. And uh, you know, unfortunately. We see across the country here, uh, we had uh, um, Christy Jacobson on yesterday, on yesterday's show, interviewed her for about 20 minutes or so. And, uh, you know, she's, to me, seems very, very committed to reforming this, I mean, this is uh, the election. The, the elections are almost become a banana republic like here in this country with, with uh, uh, ballots being found in the mail or in the, in the garbage and how many post people have they busted for doing for you know stealing mail and stuff anyway in montana here i got a call i talked to a woman yesterday and we're going to follow up with this and you can flesh this out where there is some uh there's some inappropriate uh, type of election uh, activity going on at least the advice has been that was given to the person i talked to seemed to be inappropriate um and it comes down to wanting to change your votes and being able to take a signed uh a signed ballot and open it back up 
change your vote and then just initial it and then send it back in. But we're going to get, you know, we'll go to in the specifics of that. And then we've got a, um, we have a letter here from an attorney that we're going to, we're going to show here in a moment. But if you could just lay the whole thing out for us, Brad, uh, give us sort of a, a, a back, the backstory on what's going on. And then we'll, we'll uh, jump over here to this letter that was sent out, uh, by, um, well, just yesterday, I believe by, uh, by an attorney here to Bradley Seaman, the Missoula County Elections Administrator. Brad Cheetah, over to you. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, a couple of things. I think there's, there's two backstories. Number one, somebody who wants to change and perhaps legitimately change a vote on their ballot, if they're told they can open the ballot up, make the change, you know, they can they can cross out whoever it was that they voted for incorrectly, and then they want to go ahead and vote for the other person. That ballot will be counted by hand because the machine is going to reject it for having a couple of different marks on it. So they, they will potentially be able to determine the voter's intent. That being said, what's to prevent somebody from getting a, a ballot that somebody has already completed, already signed, already authenticated, open it up, cross out whoever they wanted to vote for, whether they're crossing out a Democrat voting for a Republican or vice versa, and then go ahead and reseal that envelope after they initial next to the change they made and send it in. I mean, that, that opens up the opportunity for certain um, you know, potentially fraudulent activities. The other story that I, that prompted the letter, and I'll kind of segue into that, is that there, there's always a chance. I mean, we, we've heard in the past in, in areas around the country where you've had more votes cast than people who were registered to vote. So one of the things that we're attempting to do in Missoula, and I want to I, I give credit to Bradley Seaman for doing his best to run a good, fair, and impartial election. I spoke with him on the phone. He talked to me about the process that they have. So I really believe he's doing everything within his power to make sure the elections are fair. That being said, there are things outside of his control that we're attempting to control for. But in, in this particular instance, we asked him to keep, which they do for a number of years, every single envelope they receive so that we can then confirm the number of ballots that were cast compared to the number of envelopes. So that's that's more or less the intent of that Freedom of Information Act to ensure that we don't have more votes cast than the than the envelopes that we received. So we, we wanted to just alert people within that office that this is something that we will be checking into to do some of our own verification as we get post-election. So circling back to that first issue, the whole signature thing. And the reason it's important, folks, is because you, with the Elections Commission, you have a verified signature that they compare, at least what I'm understanding here in the Flathead Valley, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably the same. So you have a verified signature on file that when you send your ballot in, they verify that signature on your ballot with the ver with the signature that they have stored for you or in the database. They don't have your initials in the database and stored in the database. So it's like uh, I could put BT and do a BT initial on anything and say, yeah, this is Brad Cheetah and I just, here's my BT initial. And who would know? There's nothing to compare it to because that information is not on file. And even if it was, that's not really for a ballot like that. Initial is not really enough. I really think this whole, the full signature needs to be displayed just because, again, we're not asking for, you know, we're asking for fair and open elections here and free of fraud. Now, Brad, I'm going to I'm going to have you editorialize a little bit on this. We're seeing, you know, J, uh, James uh, O'Keefe coming out and, and busting people for harvesting votes. We've I had a guy on the show here back in 2006 that had to cancel checks. We're on the reservations. They were paying for votes. We find out that they're taking uh, Donald Trump votes and throwing them out. I'm starting to wonder, Brad, if the left could ever even win any elections if they didn't cheat to do it. I I'm really starting to wonder. I really am. Any thoughts on that? You know, I... I wonder as well, because you, know, it, you look at all the activities that go on among folks on the, the left side of the spectrum, and the fact that, as you said, down in Gary Owen, down in the reservation in southeastern Montana, where there were checks that were provided by uh, a gentleman who owns a business down there, and uh, I can't think of Chris's last name right now, but I've met Courtlander. him before. Chris Courtlander. Yeah, Chris Courtlander, yeah. And I had the a, checks a on my man. show. I showed my ch the checks on my show. I had the canceled yeah. checks on my show. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, but that's that's exactly you know the case. You've got people who were in fact paid for votes, and I, I know of another situation that's going on now where people are being given free food if they bring their ballot in. Well, you know, the, the, according to the Commission of Political Practices, <clears throat> that does not violate the law. 
at least the letter of the law, but but it's in an area where the majority of the people who are voting are of one particular party, that being Democrats. So anytime you look at an activity where there is incentive for people to vote or bring a ballot in or get paid for something, it typically is on the, the Democrat or the, the progressive side of things. And you look in Minnesota where there is a confirmed case of an individual who is going to uh, multi-story uh, retirement homes or, or um, assisted living homes, harvesting ballots and getting paid for that. And, and the person that was paying him, Ilhan Omar. And, you know, the, the person, you know, confirmed that she was the one responsible or her campaign, let's say, is, was responsible for it. So by default, it's her that's, that's responsible for it. So we see a number of things going on now that are, are very unscrupulous and, and totally unethical, yet they're being done. So I, I you know, I, I can't disagree with your premise that, you know, if, if the left were not you know, doing things that appear to be uh, underhanded or in some way devious, they'd have a difficult time winning a lot of elections. In Florida, they just busted him for trying to register dead people. They're trying to register, but they just did a breaking story this morning. They, they uh, in the Washington Times, they were trying to register dead people to vote Democrat. I mean, it's like, well, you it, know, there was a joke going around in, in my sphere of influence, and I, 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 my wife will probably hit me for, for making the comment, but somebody was saying that uh, a number of COVID related deaths probably haven't been reported yet because the folks have not yet voted. So they want to make sure that their vote gets counted. You know, man, I hate to, see, so. I hate to make light of that situation, but for crying out loud, you know, you may be onto yeah. something. I, yeah, I, I, it's I just a, 2020. And then Sean Connery passes away. Uh, oh, he did. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I just passed away. They just reported. Yeah. Sean Connery. To cap it all off, right? So um, yeah. let's go over here to uh, to check out this document here, Brad. So this is from the Honorable Rhodes, Seifert, and Erickson trial attorneys. I shouldn't say honorable. I think that's reserved for a judge. Uh, I'm sure they're honorable fellows. Um, the was sent yesterday uh, to Bradley Seaman. You talked about the Missouri, uh, Missoula County Elections Administrator. And uh, this right here, Brad, this is um, for you. You're, this is obviously an attorney that represents you. Give us the meat of this uh of this letter here and uh what did you i think you probably covered a little bit earlier but you want the signed ballot envelope so basically you want to get uh it's the same thing you mentioned earlier you want to get uh you want to keep track of all of the voters because you want to make sure that there's not more people voting that than than live in montana and you also want to make sure that these signature uh these 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 um the ballots that have been initialed don't get into being voted as uh um, they need to be hand counted pretty much you want to make sure that they're hand counted and opened and checked and verified is that accurate that's correct yes we as i mentioned earlier um, the elections process requires that i believe it's for a period of two years it may be longer that all the envelopes the the exterior envelopes not the secrecy blue envelopes that uh, the ballots are placed in but this the envelope that has a signature on it is kept for two years and they have to do a comparison of that signature which again you know it provides a little bit more confidence that people are not altering votes but you know who's to say that that somebody could not in fact you know write a uh, a signature on something that is approximately representative of what the original signature was but in these particular cases we believe that the authentication of those uh, ballots is going to be maintained we just want to ensure that the signed ballot envelopes are being kept for a period of time and that we have access to them so that we can go in and do our own random checks where we can confirm the uh, the signature with what they have on file. If in a case of a ballot that was corrected or modified, we can look at uh, the, uh, uh, the initializing of that uh, ballot and make sure that it is authentic. But one of the things that when I was checking, somebody had asked me if people could go back in and change their vote. And once the ballot has been received by the elections office, they open up that exterior envelope, put that exterior envelope in a file and keep it. And then they throw the, the privacy ballot in with the other ballots so they commingle them so you can't find out whose ballot it was. But if they have not yet received it or if they've received it and not yet opened it, you can go down, retrieve that envelope. And this is what I've been told. You can retrieve the envelope. You can have that uh, that vote canceled, and then you can complete a new ballot. And that, right. to me, makes more sense than having somebody open an envelope, 
make a change on, on a vote, and then uh, resecure it, send it back in with an initial. The, the best way to do that is to have somebody there confirm that the, the original ballot was destroyed. The person who completed a new ballot can authenticate and confirm who they are and then allow them to go ahead and cast that, their vote so that it's representative of who they want to uh, elect to various positions. Folks, that's one of the things that separate us from the banana republics that you see all across the world, you know, uh, of failing uh, is because of the, you know, because our 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 free and fair elections that we're, we're supposed to have in this country. Now, do I think there's been some shenanigans going on for a while? Yes. But generally speaking, it's been it's been better than a lot of places, that's for sure. And we have to maintain that integrity. As a matter of fact, I submit, folks, that we have to not only maintain it, but we need, some, need to make it better. Because, uh, Brad, you know, you're, you're in the you know, upcoming uh, legislative session here in 2021. I have to believe that that is going to be something that's going to be probably talked about quite a bit. There's probably already legislators putting together, you know, uh, uh, proposals or, or at least working groups working on something like that right now. A couple of things I think need to be done is we need, we need to be able to take the power away from this health officer that's unelected to be able to have, you know, dictatorial power, dictatorial powers across the whole county. I think there's already some things working on that and we need to, we need to, uh, take care of this situation here uh, with the voter integrity i mean there, there's many things but that that's what i submit to you do you want to th- say anything brad before we uh before we let you go give out any websites anything like that or, or follow up on anything maybe uh, uh something i didn't get a chance to ask you or something you wanted to cover before we uh close down the interview well thanks jim uh sure. to talk to, i'll talk to a couple of points and then we can go ahead and close up obviously we, we want to make sure that uh, voter integrity is maintained and the best way to do that is to um have somebody show an identification. I mean, you, you talk to people all over the country. I don't care whether it's downtown New York City in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, wherever it is, people have identification. And there are a lot of, of um, um, individuals who I, I believe uh, are, are subtly racist in terms of, and, and these are a lot of, uh, you know, white liberals, and I don't know if it's, it's liberal um, um remorse or regret, but, you know, they'll accuse blacks of not being able to, you know, produce an ID or, you know, make it difficult to get down to a, a, a DMV or to a, a voting precinct to vote. That's entirely not true. It's been, you know, totally discredited. So having an ID to vote is important. I know somebody who lost their phone and couldn't replace their telephone without identification, but the most sacred honor and duty we have, which is voting, does not require anything more than a power bill in your name. So you could be here for, you know, for 30 days, have a power bill and then vote and also vote in, you know, your, your home area. We have some bills that are going to attempt to address that with, with identification and with confirmation of what your home address is. But when we get down to, you know, to other matters, you know, that uh, the legislature is going to deal with the dictatorial powers of a, a health officer, those powers were implemented back in, you know, when, when, when Bannock was the, the territorial capital and you had cholera, diphtheria, you know, tuberculosis outbreaks, they would shut down mining and logging camps, which was justified. But in the, in the intervening 140 years, medicine has advanced so far that we have professionals who can deal with a lot of these outbreaks. And we're not seeing the kinds of problems that they saw back 140 years ago in the 1880s, 1890s. So we need to come up with a system that has elected folks as part of a committee that make determinations on how far reaching an executive or uh, emergency order can extend and for what period of time. So we are already putting together matters that deal with the gubernatorial powers and with powers of uh, county health officials. So a lot of that is in the works right now. And it's not to restrict you know, the people's ability to, to keep folks healthy. But let's face it, we can't prevent people from dying. Last time I checked, everybody is going to die. Nobody gets off the planet alive. So, you know, we, we take precautions. We do the, the things we need to do. But we understand that uh, there, there are certain things that, that are going to cause health infirmities and potentially death. I mean, I had a friend uh, of mine from grade school whose parents are 89. Dad is a stage four cancer survivor. He not only beat COVID and his wife, so Mike's parents both beat it. Dad beat a fungal pneumonia as well. And, you know, you know, and survived it at 89 years old being in stage four cancer. So, yeah, it, it, the, the disease is debilitating, but, you know, it's, it, it doesn't appear to be as lethal as we were originally told because we're, you know, 10% of the way to the, to the death total that they told us we would have. And, you know, you got 460,000 people that die every year in America from smoking cigarettes. We don't shut down the country or tell people, sorry, we're going to take away your cigarettes. 
you know, we allow them to make choices over their health. Brad, if it was as bad as the media has hyped it to be, there would be people dropping dead in the streets. Like you'd yeah. see it frequently because yeah. it's not, it's, and you know, it's suspiciously enough, the flu deaths have almost dropped off the cliff. Wow. Wait, how, how does that work? <laughs> hey, come yeah, on, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, they treat us like imbeciles. You know, the old saying is they treat us like mushrooms. They keep us in the dark and feed us manure is basically yep, what they do, you know? And, yeah. and, and yeah, if you look at the, I'll interject. If you, if you look yeah. at the, the death totals from 2017, 2018 and 2019 and compare them to where we were at the end of September. So, you know, we're, we're nine months into the year. So three quarters of the way through, if you extrapolate the monthly deaths, we will be about in the same place that we were, you know, in, in those three preceding years. So the overall death total has not elevated significantly. And if we look at the deaths from uh, 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 COVID-19 or, or SARS-CoV-2, which is the right title for it, a lot of those deaths, a uh, preponderance of the deaths occurred in nursing homes where they put people in who were sick and put them around other people who had, you know, immunity issues and they wound up dying. So. So there are some some uh, issues with the the way deaths have been counted and the total number of deaths. So yeah, I just I think we need to be told the honest truth. And so far, we've had so many variations of the story that nobody knows what to believe. Nobody knows what's true. And when I read about and talk to and visit with and study what virologists and epidemiologists say, there is no uh, confirmed science on this other than it's a, it's a disease that's going to kill some people, but it's not nearly as serious as we've been led to believe. No, I think, I, I frankly think that if they, if people turned off mainstream media for about three weeks, the disease would disappear and no one would even talk about it anymore. But, you know, it, 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 we've been captured, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a, a large segment of the society, unfortunately, has been captured. Um, their propaganda machine is, is, a, is a good one. It, it, it is, yeah. very, is very good. I mean, and we've been yeah. conditioned to, uh, we've been conditioned to accept it our whole lives, pretty much. And the television, mm -hmm. the television, Man, it hasn't been our friend. It hasn't been our friend yeah. overall. It and, really hasn't. Yeah. And if we take a look at look at countries that have malaria issues, and they've been using hydroxychloroquine, oh. zinc, and z Yep. And look at the deaths in those countries. That you know they're they're minuscule compared to the U.S. And a lot of their people who are working on the front lines are not contracting the disease. So why are we not using uh, a proven safe uh, combination of medications that will prevent people from you know, getting the, the the disease to the severity level that some people are getting it. And really, I mean, it won't prevent it, but it will reduce the impact to, to the point where you probably don't even notice that you have it. Why aren't we using uh, th those kind of medications? Because you know it's not about health, my friend. You know it's all about politics, brother. It is everything is about politics. It's, and I'm, I'm, I'm so exhausted about everything being politics. I mean, Brad, it's, 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 you, can't, you can't even speak a sentence sometimes without bringing up somebody's you know p political radar it's like for crying out loud anyway that's the world we're living in now and we just have to deal with it and hopefully we can pray for a better world and we can try to be the ones that build it that's what we can do we can we can pray about it and we can take action and uh that's my plan and i probably I su your plan too brad and that's the kind of guy you are we appreciate you coming no, here you. on the show you're welcome anything you'd like to say in closing before we uh before we end the interview with you today my friend this election is going to come down to participation. It's going to come down to who who gets out there, their gets out and votes. And anyone who has a ballot right now needs to complete that ballot. Don't try to vote on Tuesday. There will be enough people going to vote in person, even in places where they have an all mail ballot. Complete your ballot today. Drive it to the elections office. Park and walk in and place it in the ballot box. Not to disparage the people who are collecting them outside of the building, but you know, it's just like when you vote at uh, a voting precinct, you walk in and you submit your your ballot into a machine that counts it. Well, I want to put mine in to the to the last place where it's going to be deposited right. before somebody takes it out and opens it up. So, Republicans, remember uh, the last day to vote is the third of November. Get out, get your vote completed. Uh, get it placed in, and let's make sure that the people who have shown that they are responsible leaders, uh, those being conservatives, are sub are elected to office from the president all the way down to the local school board. Let's get people who are Christian, conservative, constitutional individuals 
who will fight for the rights and the liberties that were granted to us by God and preserved to us by our federal and state governments. Last question for you real quick is that just to your personal view on this. I don't know if you saw the thing where Tucker Carlson sent out some damning documents and they actually got stolen out of the uh, UPS. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that story? Yeah. What, what's yeah. Your, what, I tell you one thing. The 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 dark, the, uh, the deep state's network still has to be have some power if they're able to take that I mean and steal that out of the envelope and track that and be able to have someone on the inside to do that that's that's uh, that that's that's that was a little bit that's a little bit spooky what, what's your thoughts on that real quick before we go yeah I mean you, you you think about the intricacies of that network that's following that and and is absconding with that information fortunately they got it back they found it and they were able to retrieve it but the simple fact that somebody alerted an individual that works for a private company and directed them to take that information and, 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 you know, steal it and, and potentially not make it visible. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, it's just astounding. It's like and, Tom Clancy and type stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I don't even think that's, that barely scratches the surface, I believe, of what some of these deep state folks are capable of doing and are currently doing. I, you know, I, it's, I, I don't get scared by it because I, you know, I, I know who's in control of this whole show. Right. But the bottom line is when those kinds of things happen, it really sends up a, a red flag over how intrusive your government is in your lives right now. And we need that. That's why we're fighting to protect, you know, the God given liberties that we have. And, and all my, my buddies in the legislature that, that feel the way I do from all the good folks up in the, uh, the Flathead Valley who are <clears throat> true conservatives who echo and refrain, uh, you know, what, what uh, I believe in people in the, in the Bitterroot Valley, friends from across the state that are just, you know, tremendously good people. I don't care where, where they're from, who also believe, that they just want to be left alone to live their lives according to the the precepts that uh, our country and our state were founded on. And that's what we're fighting for. And that's what we've been fighting for, whether it's protecting uh, and preserving the police departments, making sure that people are not rioting, keeping folks safe in their homes, making sure that neighborhoods are safe, keeping taxes down, just doing the things that conservatives want us to do and that are really our our God-given heritage in uh, Montana and in the U.S. Well said, Brad Cheetah. Well said. Where can people find out more about you on your websites? Give out your website for us if you can before we let you go. Well, they can email me at brad uh, at cheetah.org and they can they can find me. They can find the spellings of those, but it's a .org address. And uh, my uh, website is my last name, Cheetah, uh, number four, MT House at Outlook.com. And they can just go on Facebook and find me there as well if they would like to. I uh, I respond to, to, to folks. I Anybody from my district that uh, reaches out to me, I reach back to them because I represent them and I want to make sure they hear my voice and they know where I stand on issues. And I, I can't say I'm perfect, but uh, I, I do a fairly credible job of getting back in touch with people when they reach out to me and respond with something meaningful, not just a, a form letter that uh, uh, kind of gives them a glossy overview and a, a response that, that might appease them. I want to make sure people know what I'm talking about and respond directly to their questions. Brad Cheetah, folks, one of the true statesmen here in Montana. We've got a lot of them, and he's one of them. We so much appreciate you joining us here on the show, Brad, and uh, keep us updated here. We're looking forward to the the uh, next legislative session, and uh, hopefully we can be in contact during that period of time, and we can uh, be talking about what's going on and, and get stuff out to the folks. We're going to be using Montana Daily Gazette along with this broadcast to do that and we so much appreciate you being on today and uh, helping us in that endeavor you bet anytime god bless you jim thanks god, for the work god bless you, you my friend take care you're quite welcome all right you too okay bye now, bye now. okay folks there goes uh, there goes brad cheetah um one of the good guys here in montana and uh, we're always so delighted to have him on the show and uh, we uh, do appreciate you appreciate the support for him and all other good conservatives here in montana uh, a lot of here in the flathead valley and a lot all over the state uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to go back and get back to our regular scheduled programming, and uh, thanks so much for looking in on this interview, James White from Montana Gazette Radio. Okay, folks, we're back live. Uh, thanks so much for looking in on that interview. Great interview there from uh, Brad Cheetah, a Montana representative here. And you know, uh, basically, as I stated during the broadcast, what we're really, what we're really looking for here is just you know fairness. Um, is that too much to ask <laughs> these days? It seems like it is. Honest and open elections. Again, uh, we mentioned it in the um, we mentioned it in the in that interview right there. And I'm going to isolate that interview and, and repost that specific interview after the show. 
uh, on another uh, on another uh, you know separate video here on on YouTube. Um, but we uh, the uh, you know the the fact that we met, like you mentioned on the show, they actually take and open up the ballots and and crossing the name out, putting the new name in, initialing it, sending it out. It just doesn't look uh, doesn't look it doesn't look like it's fair and honest to me. Um, <clears throat> we don't want that kind of you know we want people to be uh, everybody's everyone's vote to be counted. And uh, you know, listen, if you don't if you don't necessarily vote for the guy that I'm going to vote for, fine, that's okay. But wouldn't you want don't you want your vote to be counted as well? Rather, if you're you know, if you're on the other side of the aisle, I mean, isn't it important to have free and fair elections all the time? Um, maybe not, because I think, as I stated there during that interview, I uh, I believe that if all of these uh, interviews were fair, or these interviews, these elections were all fair, that the the left wouldn't win. Uh, and again, I would suggest that you look back on Northwest Liberty News and check out the Chris Courtlander interview when I actually held the canceled checks. I actually had him. I think I held him on the screen, or I had him in the uh, in the video visual uh, software, where I showed the actual canceled checks. That were given to the uh, to the members of the tribe down there for votes. So this is not a it's not a conspiracy, not a conspiracy. Uh, had the, have the actual as a matter of fact in my file somewhere. I probably have the actual document still because I save all that stuff. So I'm sure somewhere I have all that anyway. Uh, if it's ever if it's ever a challenge, I can produce those anytime. I believe. Uh, if not, I can just call Chris and get him sent back over. But the point is, yeah, it happened. Uh, it's it's real. It's uh, it, it's actual history. It's not a conspiracy theory. There's vote theft and voter theft and harvesting going on here in Montana and all across the country, and uh, it's 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 got to be stopped. That's that's one of the main things that need to happen after the if of course if 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 Trump loses there'd be no reform. It's going to get worse. But if and when Trump wins the election, and I don't even see how it. I think it's going to be just a, an ab- absolute devastating victory, perhaps like no other. I, I don't I don't I don't think my view. I don't think we're in any danger of Trump being voted out of office, cheating or no cheating. Did you see the Arizona car rally 96 miles long? 96 miles long. Biden can't get 96 cars to show up for a freaking car uh, um, um, rally when he, when, he, when he speaks in front of them. So, you know, don't believe, don't believe the polls. Pollsters are dead after this. They say dead, their whole organization, they're... they're their whole industry is dead after this after this election. I mean, why? Sh- I don't even think people listen listen to them now. I sure hope they don't. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come back. We're going to cover a couple of things here. Uh, a couple of things on the Daily Gazette. The uh, the mass police and the actually DPHHS came to uh, to uh, one of the uh, uh, person who has been fighting back against the mask mandate to question them. We're going to have her on the show tomorrow. And we're also going to have this gentleman that got kicked out of the uh, of the football game, banned uh, and threatened to be handcuffed, taken out of the game. Stephen James spoke to him yesterday. He's going to be on the show tomorrow as well, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring those uh, bring both of those fine Montana residents on and talk about the tyranny that they're suffering uh, under the uh, under the yoke of this uh, the tyrant that's running things right now. And uh, we're hopefully we're switching all that around. It was a big rally last night here in uh, Kalispell. Ted Nugent, Don Donald Trump Jr. was here. Um, I'm waiting for photos on that uh, to come in and I'll post those when I get them. Anyway, we take a quick commercial break here on the show. We come back. We're going to cover a little bit more of this news, and then we're going to have Commissioner Randy Panocci call in here to the show at nine. And until then, um, we'll be right back after these brief messages here. I'm going to hit this button and hope this spins up right away. If you like classic cars, exceptional service, and a money-back guarantee, then the corner shop in beautiful downtown Kalispell is the place for you. Whether it's an oil change, engine diagnostic, suspension work, or brakes all around, the corner shop has you covered. With expert technicians and a free consultation on all services, you can't go wrong with the corner shop. Did I mention the classic cars? While you are waiting for your expert service to be performed, take a stroll through the showroom to see Kalispell's smoothest collection of classic cars. The corner shop is conveniently located at 1212 South Main, just south of the courthouse. The corner shop is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., so drop by for an appointment or call 755-7777. 
That's 755-7777. The Corner Shop, Cal Spells Full Service Auto Repair Facility. PatriotPrepared.com carries the leading brands of storable food from Legacy and Heaven's Harvest. Patriot Prepared. Our name says it all. We're dedicated to empowering you to be self-reliant and confident in any circumstance. Whether you want to be prepared in the event of an emergency or you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, PatriotPrepared.com has prepackaged meals and kits for your entire family. Legacy, Heaven's Harvest are known for high-quality, great-tasting, GMO-free, nutritious food with no chemical preservatives. Simple to prepare, easy to store, gluten-free and organic high-quality nutrition options with a 25-year shelf life. You can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most. So go to PatriotPrepared.com right now to pick up your supply of high-quality storable food for your family because it makes good sense to be prepared. That's PatriotPrepared.com. Okay, folks, if you want to support the broadcast, uh, please support our sponsors. They're scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. If you're still looking to get some uh, storable food, camping type stuff, you can go to patriotprepared.com and you can find all that there. We do appreciate you looking in here on the show today. And if none of that suits you, just go ahead and hit the like button, if you would, and share the video and the information around so we can get the word out. Now, let's see if I can bring up this. This brings up the website here. Okay, it's not. So I'm going to bring up this website here. Just uh, bear with me for a moment. And I'm going to bring up the proper website. I had to open up a different window here and it wasn't registered. There we go there. Okay, we're going to talk about these uh, these items here today from MontanaDailyGazette.com. That's MontanaDailyGazette.com. Um, this is a really breaking story. I, I saw this uh, information come across a post. I called this gentleman up on the phone, Stephen James. Had a brief conversation with him, um, sent over a video that is at, linked at the bottom of this article right here, and you can see where he's threatened um, by this guy and the police that they're going to handcuff him to take him off the school property because it's private property. Now he's outside, actually, uh, the fence watching the game. There's no one even around him. I mean, you can see the football game going on like way off in the distance I and mean, way off but far enough off in the distance where it's <laughs> I don't know 80 100 feet away this guy is from any players um, saying kind of by himself off to the side and they uh, uh, he was approached by the um, athletic director I believe is who that guy was and uh, then the sheriff was in tow and they told him that he had to uh, leave the property. Of course, he said, all you got to do is just put a mask on and everything's okay. Just wear a mask. You see, that's, 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 the, that's the response of a tyrant, honestly. Just comply. Just comply. And things will be easy on you. Now, let me, let me tell you, I'm gonna, and you're going to hear the, the, my guest on tomorrow that is going to talk about this story right here, let's pop it over here. The subject of this article here will be on the show tomorrow. And I was just spoken to her um, yesterday. And she had a visit from CPS, came into the house and checked things out. And... She will relay this in her own voice tomorrow, but I'm going to tell you now what was said to her by the CPS uh, worker. If you cooperate, we'll go easy on you. If you cooperate with us, we'll go easy on you. As they're there trying to question her 15-year-old son. Now, if you're not familiar with what goes on with, with CPS and DPHHS here in Montana, okay, you can watch a voluminous amount of evidence that I have produced on probably over 250 broadcasts now on Northwest Liberty News where I've spoken to parents who have had their children literally kidnapped without a warrant, without due process, and then they've been gagged all in one, all in one time and their, their children are taken away from them 
sometimes never to be seen again. In America, that's right, in America. So anytime CPS comes and visits your door, believe me, they're not likely there for your for your benefit. Nope, they're not. I, I know it's going to be a, a t- that's going to be one of the toughest pills for people to swallow when this all comes out as it's coming out now and the laptop stuff is being revealed and everything that's going on with all of our all of our, our the scoundrels, our so-called leaders that the scoundrels that run things. When all of their crimes come out and all of their their their, their bribes and their and their kickbacks and their their treason, it's all going to link back the current these the, the children of their currency, folks. It's their currency. It's the currency that the elite operate in. If you don't believe me, just review some of the work I've done. There's a playlist for CPS and Family Court on Northwest Liberty News video. Just check that. See for yourself. I have documentation. I have proof. So they show up at her house and tell her, if you just cooperate, we'll be we'll take it easy on you. What, what do you mean? What do you mean if we, you, we just cooperate? What kind of tyrant says that? These people, it's not even a lawful court. It's not even a constitutional court. Not a constitutional court. Family court's a whole, it's a fraud, folks. It's a big, fat fraud. And we've all been conned. Every one of us have been conned by the whole family court illusion of helping families. No, you know what it is? It's to procure children. That's the purpose of DPHHS. They show up at her house and they threaten her. She's going to be on tomorrow and she's going to be talking about it. And you can hear it with her own, in her own voice. Tomorrow she'll, she'll be here on the program. So if you think Montana, oh man, it's great out there and it's great out here. Don't get me wrong. Love it in Montana. It's a beautiful country. Uh, I mean, just out the last couple of days, my friend was in town. We went up to Glacier Park and went to another local park here, state park yesterday. It was just beautiful, unbelievable, breathtaking, right? But there's still a lot of tyranny here. Regardless of how how nice the, the the landscape is and how nice the folks are, and there's a lot of wonderful people in, in Montana. As there, are, there's, as there is everywhere. But there's a lot of scoundrels here too. A lot of scoundrels, a lot of tyrants, a lot of would-be tyrants. And you, if you've seen the video here, and I highly suggest that you pop on over to MontanaDailyGazette.com. I think it's one of the top stories. And read down through here about what happened and then watch the video and you're just not going to believe that, that that the cops like well if you don't the guy's not even violent he's just like what i'm not hurting anybody well you know we're not even going to discuss it you aren't going to discuss it do i need to handcuff you and escort you off the property he's like what do you handcuff me <laughs> what are you handcuffing the guy for he's not wearing a mask not committing a crime, not battering anybody. He's not carrying a weapon. He's just not wearing a mask. That's his whole crime. That's his whole infraction, apparently. You just got to see the video. It's, it's preposterous. I was spitting nails when I saw it. And we got it put out on Montana Daily Gazette. Jordan Hall, the great work of Jordan Hall. The guy's a machine. Unbelievable. Got that thing out in just like a little over like an hour, I think. And posted that article out there with a, with a link. Guy does incredible work over there. Proud to be associated with him. So check everything out over at MontanaDailyGazette.com. That's Montana MontanaDailyGazette.com. So if you haven't seen the story, this is the second one of the second stories over there. I think I covered this a little bit. The whole mass thing is out of control. And I, and I, and I had Debbie Westlake on here. Last week, I believe, and they came and took her grandchildren. They, uh, she, um, she actually, you know, exposes them. She exposes the the financial shenanigans that goes on regularly on her Facebook post, and she also exposes the shenanigans that go on in uh, in CPS and uh, DPHHS. And what happens? This is what happens when you speak out in a tyranny. When you speak out, when you're run by tyrants, when you speak out, then they come after you. Just like the mask thing here in Flathead Valley, right? And the billboard, we talked, I had Jordan Hall on the show, was, uh, launching the billboard campaign to expose these people that are turning other people in their, in their own community over to the health officer so they can enact some unconstitutional shutdown of their, of their, of their facility. 
folks, are you, aren't you tired of these tyrants? I mean, have you, have you grown weary of these would-be dictator tyrants yet? What's it going to take? How much more are we going to get battered? Didn't we? St- I don't know about you, but I stopped letting adults tell me what to do when I moved out of my parents' home. That's when I stopped letting other adults tell me what to do. Who are these people? They're not even elected in this health office. They're not even elected people. It's, it's, it's preposterous. And then they're kicking guy out of a, you know, threatening to handcuff a, you know, a, a perfectly respectable citizen who's doing nothing wrong. I don't know how long we're going to keep putting up with it. I, I'm hoping it's pretty much, I hope we're done. I mean, I, I don't know how we couldn't be. I mean, are you going to wait till they have she burn your town down and burn your business down before we say enough's enough? People are standing up everywhere. That's what they need to do. There needs to be mass civil disobedience. Right? You throw a monkey wrench, enough monkey wrenches in the machine, it grinds to a halt, and it can't operate. Seriously, we don't even have to raise a weapon. We really don't. We're not calling for violence or anything. That. You don't even have to. I've said this on the show a dozen times. You don't have to be violent. You don't have to be violent. No one has to break out weapons and harm anybody. Just don't participate. Just say I'm not going to participate in your game any longer. I'm not going to play the game any longer. That's all you got to say. You don't have to be violent. You don't have to harm anybody, break out weapons, any of that stuff. Just say I'm not going to play your game. And you know how you can start? By just taking off the mask. If everybody took off the mask and said I'm not going to wear these masks any longer, we are done for. What are they going to do? Arrest everybody? Throw everybody in jail. We're already in a prison. We really are. We're already in our in, in, in a prison that, with bars that we don't see. And I've said this on the show before. You got to get a permit to go hunting. And I've said it numerous times. Permit to go fishing. A permit to do nails in the house. A permit to cut hair. A permit to put an addition on your house. A permit to pour a sidewalk. Permit, permit, permit. Permission, permission, permission. You're a slave. You're already in a prison. If that's what you have to do to live your life is to get permission from your overlords, free people don't do that, folks. Free people don't have to ask permission to do everything they want to do in their life. That's not freedom. Not freedom. It's an illusion of freedom. It's the illusion of freedom. And that's what we're living on currently. Once we break this illusion, this con, once the once the cracks, once the, once it cracks open, and and more people start, you set tipping point, their whole entire operation crumbles because it's built on fraud, lies, propaganda, disinformation, half truths, evil. That's what it's all built on. Their whole platform, their whole platform, and we've all pretty much fallen for it in one level or another. <laughs> Anytime you're standing inside a football game, watching a football game, in the open air, with the sun shining, not standing around anybody, and they come up and tell you to leave, or they're going to handcuff you because you're not wearing a mask, can you still say that's freedom? With a straight face. Can you still say we're living free there in Yellowstone County? And the sheriff should be shamed. I'm ashamed of the sheriff. I'm ashamed of the sheriff. You took an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You took that oath, sheriff. You and all your deputies took that oath. You violated that oath. You violated that oath. You'd be ashamed of yourself. We should shame the sheriff. Send letters. Call the sheriff's department. Watch that video first. You don't have to watch it with at, at Montana Gave the Gazette. You can go to the, his Facebook page, or I think I think it copied it on... Northwest Liberty News is Facebook page. It doesn't matter. Find the video. See the video. See it for yourself. Don't believe me. Don't believe anything I say. Research everything yourself. Look up the video. And then you should be calling the Yellowstone Sheriff's Department and, 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 and expressing your outrage. Your outrage over what happened to this guy that's just standing around calmly watching the game. This, is, this, is, this, should, this, should, this should alarm people when you see this type of thing happening. Don't, they want to, they want to get history out of our brain. They want us to forget history and they, they've molded and shaped history, right? And, 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 and much of it 
has been obscured. Remember, remember, the history is written by the victors. History gets written by the people that win, not the people that lose. People that lose, you know, they're wiped out. They don't have a voice. But so history is written by the victors. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. So we've uh, we've got both of these uh, both of these fine people on the show tomorrow, and uh, we are going to talk to them about what happened to them in their own uh, in their own words. And um, we're, uh, we're you know we're delighted that you that, to have them on. We're delighted that they decided to come on the show. Uh, I think um, the show tomorrow will be from nine to eleven. And uh, I believe that uh, our first guest is going to be on around 9.30 and our second guest will be on around 10.30. So if you catch the whole show, you'll be able to see both of those guests tomorrow. And uh, they will recount uh, in their own words what happened to them. But it is a, uh, uh, yeah, this, where did this happen? This happened in Yellowstone County is where this happened. This is just uh, yesterday, um, the video. And I said, again, I'm going to put the link in the chat room to the actual article on the Montana Daily Gazette, uh, and the, I'm going to put that in there right now, and then you can go there and check that out and watch that video at the bottom. And there we go. I put it in there now. Watch that video at the bottom, and call, call the call the sheriff's department. Call the sheriff's department and and tell them that that's it's 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 preposterous that they have violated someone's right just standing around minding their own business. Right? Go apprehend some criminals. How about that? How about that? Go go get some go 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 catch some real crooks. Be hanging around a freaking football game, trying to uh, threatening to arrest bystanders who are just standing around minding their own business. Go catch some criminals, sheriff. How about that? How about that? I got a friend that lives in Bozeman. You know, every 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 criminal in Bozeman has not been apprehended yet. Right? There's still crime that goes on. Go catch those crooks for crying out loud. Leave the guy at the football game alone. How about that? Constitutional sheriffs, folks, we've done we've done numerous broadcasts on that on, on my other network, how important it is to have constitutional sheriffs in your community. And if you don't have a constitutional sheriff in your community, you need to vote them out and vote a constitutional sheriff in. There's almost always one running, a lot of times, there's a constitutional sheriff running um, but he doesn't, you know, take dark money and he doesn't, you know, do whatever it takes to collect funds. So oftentimes he doesn't have the type of war chest that the other guy has or girl or woman, I should say. So, you know, there's a lot of times constitutional sheriffs, if you just research it, there's a constitutional sheriff on your ticket, um, typically, or a lot of times, not every time. But if there's not, encourage, you do it. You don't, I, from what I remember here, you don't have to have, at least it's at least in Montana, I don't even believe you have to have previous law enforcement experience to be a sheriff, to run for sheriff. If I remember correctly, I don't believe you have to have former law enforcement experience to run as a sheriff. So if there's nobody in your town that wants to stand up, you be the one that stands in the gap. You be the guy or you be the woman that stands in the gap. Again, you know, we just like we can't let others guard, be the guardians of our liberty, right? We can't let others be, be the ones in position to, of authority in our community. If they're not constitutional and they don't follow, uh, uh, they don't follow the Bill of Rights and, and, and they, don't, they, don't, they don't adhere to their oath. This is important. They don't, they don't, they give the oath out, not just because it's words, it's an important, it's very important. And here's the thing about your oath. It doesn't expire. There's no expiration date on it. There isn't. So there's, there's groups like Oath Keepers out there and, and the three percenters and other groups that are, they're former military and, and, uh, uh, law enforcement and that, and whatnot that, that try to, you know, uphold that, that the honor, you know, uh, of the oath to the Constitution. This is important stuff, folks. This is important stuff, and we have to hold our leadership accountable for these things. We're going to uh, we're going to be having Commissioner Panocci on the show here just in a moment. We're going to cover, thanks for letting me rant there. We're going to be covering this uh, story here 
right here, Northwestern Abandons Coal Strip. Utility blames the state of Washington and Montana's Public Service Commission for insufficient support of the deal. We're going to cover this, and we're going to open up the phones uh, here in just a couple of minutes with Commissioner Pinochi here on the show. MontanaGazetteRadio.com, MontanaGazetteRadio.com, or MontanaDailyGazette.com, or the flagship Northwest Liberty News.com. We're going to continue this broadcast through after the election. We, uh, we're we kicking around right now having an election day special. I don't think I'll be broadcasting Tuesday morning, probably later on in the afternoon. I may go live later on in the afternoon and do, you know, when the results start rolling in. Um, and who knows even if it's going to be, I don't know if we're even going to be able to do determine anything on the uh, on the actual day of the election that remains to be seen who knows what's going to be happening with um with these you know the the, the late votes and it yeah it may be a point where trump has just dominated so much that the late the late votes won't even count they won't even matter you can turn them in whenever you want it doesn't make a difference turn them all in for biden if you want to because trump's already won i think that's probably what it's going to come down to if i had sus to suspect it and, you know, we're going to see, they've already saw, said they're going to be ramping up and perpetrating a lot of ultraviolence after, uh, after the election. So we got some, uh, we got some uh, uh, interesting times coming up here this f coming week. This coming week is going to be one to remember probably for the rest of your life, um, I think. And uh, we, we, you know, you tell your children the same thing I tell my children if you choose to. I tell my children to pay attention, close attention to everything that's going on because we literally are living through historical times that I believe generations and generations to come are going to be looking back on these times right now and marveling at at what's going on and what is going what what is going to be happening. I truly believe that. Uh, so we're going to see if Commissioner Pinochi has uh, called in yet. Okay, so we're going to do here is we're going to take another quick uh, commercial break here and uh, get back on track here. I went over a little bit on the last one. And we come back, I think that Commissioner Pinochet will be on the line then. And we will talk about this coal strip thing and other things. Always exciting time with uh, Commissioner Randy Pinochet. We'll be back after these brief messages here on Montana Gazette Radio. PatriotPrepared.com carries the leading brands of storable food from Legacy and Heaven's Harvest. Patriot Prepared. Our name says it all. We're dedicated to empowering you to be self-reliant and confident in any circumstance. Whether you want to be prepared in the event of an emergency or you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, PatriotPrepared.com has prepackaged meals and kits for your entire family. Legacy, Heaven's Harvest are known for high-quality, great-tasting, GMO-free, nutritious food with with no chemical preservatives. Simple to prepare, easy to store, gluten-free and organic high-quality nutrition options with a 25-year shelf life. You can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most. So go to PatriotPrepared.com right now to pick up your supply of high-quality storable food for your family because it makes good sense to be prepared. That's PatriotPrepared.com. Have you heard of Protovite? The most common health concern today is poor digestive health. Unlike ordinary supplements, Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology. A published scientific study proves that Protovite is nutrition that gets in 100% of the time. Protovite uses the highest quality ingredients to rapidly nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. Protovite, nutrition that gets in. Buy Protovite now. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. Okay, folks, if you want some of the highest quality liquid vitamin supplementation on the market there, you can go to bloodboost.net. That's bloodboost.net and check out the full line of ProtoVite products there. And all of the proceeds, all of the uh, purchases there help benefit this independent news network. Or you can go to Northwest Serbian News and click on the support independent news button there. 
and support us that way. And we do certainly appreciate your support. So joining me here now is going to be Commissioner Randy Panocci. Let's see if this here. And let me give uh, Commissioner Panocci a proper intro, and then I will invite him on the show. Joining me today once again is Montana Public Service Commissioner Randy Panocci. Commissioner Panocci was elected to serve on the Public Service Commission District 1 in 2018. District 1 encompasses 19 counties, which is the largest number of counties and the most square miles of any PSC district. Prior to being elected to the PSC, Randy Panocci was a small business owner while working full-time in the printing business for over 32 years, specializing in political direct mail. He has also served as a statewide director for former United States Senator Conrad Burns, chair of the Second Amendment Committee for the Republican Party. In addition to those duties, Commissioner Panocci also served in 2015 as a member of the Montana State House of Representatives and has served as a longtime member of the Board of Directors for the Montana Shooting Sports Association. During his time with the MSSA, he assisted in introducing and passing pro-gun legislation in Montana. MSSA has passed more pro-gun laws than any other state organization in the United States history, and we're always delighted to have him here on the program. Let me bring him on. Commissioner Randy Panocci, thanks so much for joining us here on Montana Gazette Radio. Thanks for having me, Jim. Great to be here. Well, it's great to have you, Commissioner. I think you're probably one of the uh, the most uh, visited guests here, I think, on the show. Um, well, expect, certainly with EIV Radio. EIV Radio, uh, you, you were on the, quite, a, quite a few times, and we broke some really some really big news, I think, on that uh, on those broadcasts. And uh, I'm so delighted that you made the jump over here to Montana Gazette Radio with me, my friend. Good to, good to have you here today. Well, I'll tell you what Montana needs is some good, honest, balanced reporting. And uh, this is where you folks can find it. And that's why I'm here. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, no, so we're, we're, we're having you here today. And we could talk about a variety, a variety of uh, issues I know. Um, you're, you're well versed on, on many topics, uh, uh, Commissioner Panocci. But before we get into the coal strip thing, let me uh, recap. I think last time we talked to you here, I believe you were getting ready to head out to go down to Jekyll Island for a uh, for an event down there. Uh, if you can give us a recap there, because I think, as again, I think we talked about that. I think you had, we had you on the show last, right before you were going, or a few days before you left. Tell us about that trip and uh, let us know um, how things went and what kind of stuff you learned while you were down there. The Red Pill event is a great way to get up to speed on some of the issues facing our nation. Uh, In particular, uh, some of these issues uh, will affect or have good concern to the Public Service Commission issues on the safety of 5G communications, the safety of the new smart meters. Uh, We just had testimony on smart meters and the dangers of smart meters at the Montana Public Service Commission. And I have to give credit to Ed Griffin and the Red Pill event because a lot of the training that I received uh, was from the past Red Pill events where I was the only Public Service Commissioner really there Then I get attacked for going, uh, but then when I'm up to speed on the issues, uh, everybody fails to give credit to where the teaching really belongs. And, uh, you know, I just got to thank Ed Griffin and Red Bill for getting people up to speed. Indeed, Ed's a good guy. I've interviewed him a few times on the show on Northwest Liberty News and a great event there that he puts on. And that really started sort of as just a, just like, you know, a few people getting together with an idea and uh, boy, I tell you, it's really grown into it's really grown into quite an event with a lot of great a lot of great speakers. Uh, uh, did you get a chance to speak, Commissioner? Did you get a, did you have a, a slot to speak? Uh, you, did you go up in front on stage? Absolutely. And- uh, uh, one of the things I was able to do was uh, explain to the crowd that uh, when I went to the past events, I learned about the smart meters. Then we had a hearing in Montana on smart meters where I listened to testimony for and against, and was able to explain to them that I believe Montana will be one of the first states to allow the public to opt in for a smart meter or opt out and keep your conventional meter. And I think the legislature is going to pass that uh, bill in this next session. 
that's really key right there, uh, Commissioner. Let's let's flesh that out a little bit. So what you're saying is, right now, um, it's pretty much you get a smart meter whether you like it or not, uh, or you have to actually specifically say, I don't want a smart meter. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to switch it around to where someone you get the normal meters and someone has to specifically say, I do want the smart meter. Is that is that kind of is that accurate? I, I believe that is the way to support this, and I will be testifying on the knowledge I have when we have uh, testimony during the legislative session. I don't know who's going to introduce the bill yet, but I am certain someone will. And if you want to go over some pros and cons to smart meters, well, I can sure go over that with you now. Well, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, and then we'll get over to the coal strip thing. I got that article pulled up here. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that because, I mean, that's – it's. I've done a couple of, uh, well, more than a couple of videos with smart meters and some of the potential dangers of it. Um, there have, you know, folks, they don't, pre they don't, they don't publish this a lot in the news, but a lot of houses have caught on fire because of the smart meters. Just do the research. It's not easy to find because they have buried some of it, but it's not all just, you know, uh, popcorn and, uh, uh, you know, and cotton candy here with uh, smart meters. I mean, there's some dangers to it. I know it helps. It benefits the the power companies because they can just, you know, it helps them with their manpower. Uh, uh, you know their their labor cost because I know a lot of stuff's just transferred through the through the uh, through the wire. But uh, yeah, tell us the pros and cons of that if you uh, if you could, Commissioner. Well, I sure want to talk a little bit about what you mentioned where it caused fires. You know, with anything that's invented, if you're going to make a new car or you're going to make a microwave oven, uh, you're you're going to find uh, some difficulties until they get the bugs worked out. For instance, the microwave may work fantastic and never give you a problem, but if you're cooking all day with the stove and the microwave's right ne next to it and the microwave heats up to 250 degrees because you've been baking a turkey all day, then you turn on your microwave, it bursts into flames. And of course they'll say, well, we just didn't realize it was gonna do that until after we burned a few homes down. And the smart meter is probably the same thing though. It worked fine in 70 degree temperature, but when the sun was pointed at it in 104 degrees, all of a sudden your house burned down. It, these things uh, happen until bugs can be worked out and we realize how we got to improve things. But it's a little deeper than that. Uh, I heard testimony, and by the way, Bob Lake allowed me to chair this hearing, so I ran it, and I specifically asked to do it because I felt I had the most experience of any commissioner because I've been going to these events, I've been reading about it. In fact, I've even been passing out information to fellow commissioners on what I've found. He allowed me to chair it, and we heard testimony where if metal is installed in your body, say a knee or hip replacement or maybe dental work, that doctors are claiming the signal transmitting from a smart meter can cause disruption in your body. Heard that testimony again and again. Now, during testimony, I don't get to view my opinion or I don't get to speak. I'm really there to gather information from those who do speak. So I'm just listening, right? Uh, this testimony, by the way, is available on our website. You just go to the Montana Public Service Commission website. And you can listen to past hearings, and this is on smart meters. For those of you that are interested, please go there. Now, one of the things I've learned uh, where you would want a smart meter uh, is if you produced solar on your roof and you happen to live in a city like Seattle where the price of electricity increases sharply starting at about 4 p.m., remains at a very high price until about 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., uh, if you were to generate electricity during that time and not use it, you would want to be able to say, well, look, if I generated electricity during that high that high price time, I should get that higher price credit. You're only going to be able to prove that if you have a smart meter. So people with a rooftop solar or say a wind turbine or if you were generating electricity would want to show what times you were generating that electricity, then I, I believe it would be very important for that owner to have a smart meter. Now folks, one of the reasons the smart meter is, is getting implemented in some states and you don't have a choice and you have to accept it is the power company doesn't have to send a meter reader to your home. They actually can just do it electronically uh, and no one has to be there. 
Also, they can turn your electricity off to your home or turn it on without actually going to the location. Uh, most of us that have been around a while know if you go to a place and the power is turned off because you bought a new home, they have to come over and physically plug in the meter and you know officially turn it on. Sometimes you got to wait a day or two before they can get to you. With a smart meter, they don't need to do that. So uh, there's those benefits. Uh, but what we're finding is people say, well, I don't want to be watched. I'm concerned about the signal. I think the way to go here, folks, is to allow the public to either have a smart meter or not. Uh, and I and I think that uh, bill is going to come here very soon. I would say by January or February, we should see that bill in the legislative session. Well, that'd be fantastic. Uh, that would be fantastic to be able to have a choice. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, Commissioner. We just want to have a choice, right? We just don't. Who wants to be told what to do? And, and we don't have to get into the whole mask thing. I talked about that last hour, but that's that's how I feel about the mask. You know, like, you know if you want to wear one, hey, by all means, go right ahead. But if you, if I don't, and you know, okay, same thing. And either person should be penalized for for having their, you know, their their uh, to be able to do freely what they want to do. So that's a, you know, that that's a really that's a big thing in a, in a, a free and open society is a person's you know right to have a choice, uh, commissioner. So I'm I'm all I'm all behind that. I'm all for that. Uh, thanks so much for your work on that. By the way, uh, I know you've been uh, you've been on top of that for quite some time and. We've had this discussion before, and I know that a lot of times, uh, Commissioner, you do this stuff on your own expense. You do this, uh, you do a lot of this stuff, and you travel at your at your own cost, and and you don't you don't charge the ratepayer of Montana to do some of these things. So that's that's stuff that a lot of people don't know is the, your own personal money that you put into these things um, without any recognition. So I just wanted to to thank you for that, Commissioner, very much. Well, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so let's get over here to the uh, to the story of the day, and we can open up the phones and take calls here uh, after we, we we cover this. We're gonna sort of uh, go over this and have you have you uh, talk about this uh, this coal strip thing here. And the uh, the title of the article. Let me bring it up here, folks. The title of the article from the Montana Free Press is "Northwestern Abandons Coal Strip Bid." Utility blames state of Washington and Montana Public Service Commission for insufficient support of the deal. And let's read here first couple paragraphs, and we'll have Commissioner Pinochi comment on this. Northwestern Energy said Thursday it is withdrawing a bid to purchase an expanded share in the Coast Strip power plant from Washington-based Puget Sound Energy, blaming the Washington state government and the Montana Public Service Commission for failing to support the acquisition. It is disappointing that policies enacted by the Washington legislature are controlling Montana's natural resources and our ability to reliably and cost-effectively serve our Montana customers, Northwestern Government Affairs VP John Hines said in a statement. It is also disappointing that decisions by the Montana Public Service Commission have been so unsupportive of this fight of this vital generation. Commissioner Panocci, you are, of course, a member of that very same Montana Public Service Commission that they are um, <clears throat> they are disparaging here somewhat, I guess, in this article. Uh, what do you, what say you, uh, let's do a little fact checking on this, Commissioner, from your viewpoint, is this an accurate, is this an accurate uh, depiction of the real truth about what's going on in this whole scenario? Over to you. I don't believe it is. I'm very disappointed in how Northwest Energy uh, made this statement uh, about the Public Service Commission. I think for them to be concerned with uh, the Washington Public Service Commission or the difficulties the state of Washington have put in front of Northwest Energy, uh, that, that is absolutely, I, I believe, a true statement. Uh, but the Montana Public Service Commission is listening very closely to testimony for coal strip and against coal strip and uh, i want everyone to know that really a public service commissioner is a judge uh, i can't and it wouldn't be right for me to say i support uh, coal strip or i'm against coal strip until i hear all the testimony but i can tell you that i have been listening to testimony uh, for months and I can sure share that with you, and I can also prove anything I'm saying 
because it is all recorded, which you can go to the Montana Public Service Commission website and look at past hearings and watch them or listen to them. Uh, so let's talk about some of that testimony that's been given, and I, I can start with, uh, I think, the importance of why coal strip is needed based on uh, testimony from Northwest Energy and, and uh, also the ratepayers. So fire away, and let's let's get started. Well, no, go ahead, uh, Commissioner. Talk to, you've been to the yeah. You have uh, you know you've been on the inside. When I say on the inside, you've been you know who who would have better information about what's going on than you? So talk about if you can the importance of coal strip and uh, and, and you know what why it would be good for Montana. Well, let's start in the very beginning before I was a public service commissioner, and I was running to be a public service commissioner. People, uh, you know, forget very quickly about the past races. I was in a four-way primary. Four Republicans wanted this position, and that had never happened before in the history of District 1. Usually it's one or two guys running for it in a primary. Uh, usually it's one or two guys in the general. Uh, and a person will say, well, wait a minute. Uh, you know, we have two choices in the general. No, sometimes uh, only one person will run. But uh, Pinochi really had the first four-way primary. And when you get out to your district, you'd really better know what the issues are in front of you. And I'm going to tell you what the big one was. And my opponents just weren't prepared for this at all. Now, one of the reasons I had an advantage over my three opponents is I served in the legislature before. Not only that, I served on FRET, Federal Regulation, Energy, and Telecommunications, where I worked with the Public Service Commission, Travis Kavula, Brad Johnson, for a couple of years. So when I ran for the Public Service Commission, I had a great deal of experience knowing what happens from the Public Service Commission and dealing with energy. Well, folks, here is a major problem. The state of Montana does not produce enough electricity to supply the state. We're deficient. Now, when we have all kinds of wind and the sun shining, in most cases, we have enough electricity. But we run into problems when the wind stops blowing and there's no sunshine, which is every day. Uh, during a cold snap a couple of years ago, we had no wind for over a month and no sunshine for over a month because it was cloudy every day. More importantly, it was 20, 30, and 40 below zero. Record cold. Um, no one wants to bring up, hey, I thought we were going through global warming. Um, a couple of years ago, that wasn't the case. And we had to buy our electricity from outside of Montana. But the wind and sun was not shining in several states. The price of electricity can sell as cheap as $30 a megawatt. But during this time, it was selling over $900 a megawatt. So it costs millions of dollars of additional money, which I have to pass on to the ratepayer. Now, during the time I was running for this position, people said, what should we do about that? Now, as I'm running, I have an opinion. Once you're a public service commissioner, you have to say, I, I've got to listen to the testimony. So it's completely fair for me to tell you what I said before I was a public service commissioner. And here's what I said. Folks, Montana needs to make more electricity than it uses and be an exporter of electricity. And here's why. If Northwest Energy produces more electricity than it needs and it can sell electricity and make a profit, they have to share that with the rate payer. This can bring our rates down. This will also prevent us having a shortage when there's no wind or solar and having to buy electricity 10 times higher than we do. I want to prevent that problem from happening. So I can't really say that today as a public service commissioner, but it's not wrong for me to say that was the answer I gave while I was running to be a public service commissioner. People were really receptive to that. People looked at that and said, we got four people running, and this Pinochi guy, I like how he thinks, and I believe he 
he's going to really work on these problems and not just say that to get elected. Now, one of the problems after you get elected is then they'll tell you in training, look, you, you can't really give your opinion uh, until after we've made a judgment, after we have uh, made a decision. And as a judge, you've got to listen to both sides of the testimony, and then you convene and vote. After the judgment's made, you can give some opinion, right? So for, for Northwest Energy to say, uh, you know, we prevented this at the Public Service Commission, when we we haven't even had a chance to make a decision is, is ludicrous. So I suspect they wanted to get out of the deal for whatever reason, and they're just looking for people to blame. Uh, so that's a, a good place to start. So where would you like well, to go? Well, what, do you, what is your thoughts as far as the long term? You, you, you said they wanted to get out of the deal, and I don't know. There's probably certain things you can't you know, discuss if, even, if, even if you knew um, but is there, is there, is there somebody, is there going to be another, is this going to, is it a dead, so to speak, or do you think there's going to be some other, some other options available in the future? Uh, can you even speak on that as far as purchase, as far well, as we can certainly talk about what's been revealed or what has been testified to so far? Uh, it, it looks like Northwest Energy's upset with the Montana Public Service Commission because. Uh, we told them they had to cover some more cost that they were hoping we'd pass on to the ratepayer. And there's an article uh, just a couple weeks ago where uh, the Public Service Commission said, "Hey, look, if if things aren't up to date with the scrubbers or the you don't have the latest equipment, you guys got to be responsible for that. Uh, you, you just can't come up with every single uh, bill and say the." the rate payer is going to pay for it. Now, folks, I want to give you a couple of ways to watchdog this. Keep in mind, uh, I can't just vote against every single increase Northwest Energy wants, because if they go out of business, we don't have a power company. So I have a very delicate balance. I have to make sure they're profitable enough to stay in business, folks. But I also want to make sure that they're not taking advantage of us with too high a prices. One of the ways we can check that is, what the hell's the company doing with profits? You know, a few years ago, Northwest Energy was experiencing record profits. One of the reasons I was upset with the Montana Public Service Commission is, if they're experiencing record profits, you're not doing your job. You've got to be voting against rate increases if they're experiencing record profits, Right. I, you know, I look at a retired person, and, and they'll look at me and say, Randy, if they're experiencing record profits, you better not be giving them a rate increase. And that senior citizen is absolutely correct. So one of the things we look at here is I keep sticking my head through the door of my attorneys and staff and say, how's Northwest Energy doing? Are the profits way up? Are they coming down? you got to keep one eye on that with every decision you make. And then the other thing is you've got the Montana Consumer Council, which looks out for the little guy. If you have a problem with your utilities on, and you think you're paying too much or they're not treating you right, one of the people you can call, one of the organizations, is the Montana Consumer Council. Well, here a couple of weeks ago, they had said, uh, look, Northwest Energy needs to pay for this. So uh, I got to keep one eye on their profits and another eye on the consumer council while also listening to the rate payer, right? And you almost want to reach your hand out and feel the pulse of everything. And that's a delicate balance. Well, keep in mind, if they're going to get a 30% share of coal strip for a dollar, the stockholders are going to wind up with Millions of dollars of property for a dollar. Coal strip is worth millions. But more importantly, the power lines that transmit the power from coal strip to Seattle is worth a billion dollars, folks. And they're going to get an equal share of that. So by making this purchase, the stockholders are going to you know, have more value overnight. And 
this has been brought out in testimony, and I don't think that people understand that. You know, Commissioner, I want to I want to switch over here and get your view on this uh, because I know you have had um, <clears throat> background in history with the Montana uh, Sports Shooting Association. The uh, breaking news here that was posted yesterday on Montana Daily Gazette's fo- Facebook page: Pro Gun LR130 being opposed by one million dollars from the Montana Public Employees and Teachers Union. Let me read that to you again. Pro-Gun LR-130 is being opposed by $1 million from the Montana Public Employees and Teachers Union. Uh, Pro-Gun, of course, uh, Commissioner, you're probably well aware of this being uh, with the Montana Sports Shooting Association. Do you care to comment? What's your your initial, what's your visceral reaction when you see that the uh, Montana Public Employees and Teachers Union are putting a million dollars behind the passage Actually, the defeat of a bill that's a pro-gun bill. Give me your thoughts on that. Well, I want to educate the public to be a public employee. You're really required to be a member of the union. And your tax money, when you pay the teacher or the guy who's fixing the road or the public employee, a part of your taxes really wind up supporting a union, which turns around and says, vote Democrat. And then turns around and is always asking for a raise for the employees. And a, and a taxpayer might say, look, that's not quite right. So uh, other states have said, look, public employees can be union if they want, but if they don't want to be, they don't have to be. And we really call those right-to-work states. Now, folks, I want you to listen to this carefully because I think these guys are caught red-handed misusing money that – is really funded by your taxpayer money. Here we've got uh, really the leader of the union doing direct mailings and advertisements on TV and on the computer to stop LR-130. That doesn't have anything to do with teachers or public uh, employee jobs. So a person might say, and this is my experience as a Uh, representative from House District 19 back in 2015, they're always coming in every session saying, we need more money, we need more money. Uh, You know, one of the the great leaders of the teachers union was Eric Fever. And I remember telling Eric Fever, let me ask you something. If I gave you all the money you wanted for for teachers, I doubled it. Would the grade point average of the student increase by one point? You know, folks, Worldwide, the United States, we don't produce the smartest kids on the planet. In fact, it's almost embarrassing. We're ranked like 25th. It changes from year to year. No, it's true. Sometimes we're 22nd. You're true. Sometimes we're 25th. Yep. And what amazes me is people don't even realize where the smartest kids are coming from. And I think one of the countries, and then this can change from year to year, that produces the smartest kids – with the least amount of money invested in education, it isn't China, it's not Japan, it's not India, it's Vietnam. <laughs> so the next time we want to bring a bunch of refugees in and pay for all their housing and medical, folks, I got an idea. Bring all the teachers from Vietnam because they're going to make 10 times more than they've ever made in their life and just let them teach the way they do in Vietnam and <laughs> we'll produce some of the smartest kids in the world. <laughs> And I I think people need to understand that Montana's number one budget item is education. But nobody really seems to look at what's our grade point average compared to other countries. Well, let me tell you something, folks. The United States spends more on education than any other country. But we're not producing the smartest kids. So uh, these unions keep asking for more and more money every year. Then they turn around and we catch them spending it on trying to stop a ballot issue that has nothing to do with public employees or teaching. Folks, that's a reason in the next session to say, we're not giving you any more money because you're blowing it on things that you, you should have no business in. Precisely. I think they're caught. And this really broke uh, from Gary Marbot. Uh, and I know other people have probably noticed it besides Gary Marbot, but he was the first to tell me about it. And I just, I, I think this is a, a very serious situation, and we got to get people up to speed on it. And that's what we're doing right now on 
on on on this show. Well, you know what, what it reminds me of, uh, Commissioner, is um, the the, uh, the Planned Parenthood gets I don't know how many hundreds of millions of dollars of government funded, you know, government government money every year, and then they turn around and donate thirty or forty million dollars into the Democrat fund. It's it's money laundering. It really is what that is. That what you're seeing it's money laundering is what they do. And that 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 goes on a lot. So yeah, it's not it's not a, there's nothing new. What the great great King Solomon say, there's nothing new under the sun. This is how these people operate. Um and I think that you what you stated is uh that is really does need to be looked at next next legislative session when they're asking for money. Well why don't you claw back some of that million dollars you spent to defeat, you know, a constitutional uh gun uh, uh constitutional gun uh, bill so yeah i think that's an excellent uh, <laughs> excellent idea commissioner bravo we're gonna we're gonna open up the phone lines folks if you want to call in and talk to commissioner panocci you can dial 563-999-3617 563-999-3617 and i hate to have to say it every time but the rules of the phone uh the phone call-in show here are you do not have to agree with myself or the guest, just be respectful and uh, don't use vulgarity. This is not really a vulgar show. If you haven't noticed, if you watch, we don't, we don't, we don't drop a lot of f bombs. As a matter of fact, we don't drop any, and we don't do any of that. So just keep keep it clean, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> Christian Pinocchi, we're, we're here, and I want to get your thoughts on this. We're just days away, days away from, you know, and we've said it before in this program, and it's been said numerous times, but I really honestly believe this year is absolutely a true statement to say that this is perhaps one of the most important elections that we've ever, that I can ever see, uh, that I've been, you know, uh, you know, that I've been in a you know, voting age or even been following the news. Uh, what's your what's your thoughts here coming up here a couple days away, two days away, actually, on this, uh, the Tuesday vote? What's your what's your thought, uh, 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 Commissioner Pinochet, right now as far as, um, how uh, how you feel about how things are going with the uh, you know with the with the wave the red wave we're we gonna see uh, we're gonna see a red wave coming up here in uh, two days. I believe so, and I think one of the most important issues, the most important issue, let's just get to it, is our national debt. And oddly enough, it's really not being discussed, folks. We are going into debt every second. Uh, we have a debt clock that shows how we keep falling deeper in debt and we have to borrow money from other countries. People, we have to get that under control. We have to make tremendous cuts in every state legislature and at the federal government level. And this is why I talked about the Israel coal. Instead of giving Israel billions of dollars where we print the money on a press and we go into debt farther, we should give them coal, which we have, and then give the coal producers in Montana some of that cash and keep it here. I'm trying to slow down that debt clock. You know, when I I say the teachers unions have so much money that they can invest millions of dollars on an issue that has nothing to do with teaching. Folks, you've got to get a handle on that. And here's what I say almost every show. Folks, this government is your government, and you get the government you deserve. And what I'm telling you is you don't know the difference between the good guys and bad guys because a lot of bad politicians keep getting reelected. This is on your shoulders. And if we don't get the debt under control, what is China going to call us and say, guess what? We own the United States. We're just moving in because you owe us so many trillions of dollars that we now can just take the United States. What are we going to do? Go to war? You guys got to vote for people to get the spending under control. If the country of Vietnam is producing the smartest kids in the world and they're spending, you know, one twentieth of what we spend per student, we've really got to look at that and save billions of dollars in education while we improve it. And we got to apply that to every aspect of our spending in government. And I believe that we're going to see a red wave because people are concerned about that. But I'm going to say something else. There are several Republicans in this country. There are several Republicans in the state of Montana that spend too much money, or they just vote for every tax increase there is. You got to identify who those Republicans are 
and those Democrats, and you have to start making changes. Folks, the national debt is the most serious issue in front of us. Trust me. Well, I actually brought up the debt clock while you were uh, while you were speaking there, Commissioner. Uh, Fantastic. If you can't, if you haven't been there with folks, it's usdebtclock.org. Usdebtclock.org, and I will take that and put it actually in the uh, in the chat room here real quick. And uh, if you just look at this, folks, this is a this is a debt. Here, let me put it in the chat room. There you go, folks. This is a debt that cannot be. I mean, let's face it here, just an unfunded liabilities alone, unfunded liabilities. You know what that means? Unfunded liabilities, monies that we have promised to people. We are in the red, 155 trillion, 291 billion, 242 million. And it's going so fast and the hundred thousands that I can't even, I can't even read it. Um, The liability per citizen for the unfunded liabilities is $469,000. That's how much you and I owe on this unfunded liability, Commissioner. Do you have $469,000 laying around to pay that off? Because I know I sure don't. Well, here's how bad it is. A way to look at it is if the debt had to be turned in and all of us owed $400,000, here's one way you could get out of it. You could move to another country and become a citizen in another country and relieve yourself of that debt. You know, no one ever says that because it just seems unimaginable. But at some point, uh, you wonder why people have a house in another country. Uh, Maybe they're thinking if things get so bad and the entire country just falls apart and, and all this debt is owed, you could sell everything you own go to the Philippines and retire nicely for the rest of your life uh, or other country. And uh, we got to start looking at that as a a real problem. And the only way we're going to beat it, folks, is we have to expect more responsible spending from your elected officials. This government is your government, and you get the government you deserve. And right now we're in serious trouble because the public has failed to elect officials that want to do responsible spending. I can't stress that enough, folks. Well, fi- uh, folks, 563-999-3617, 563-999-3617. And uh, Commissioner, I know that you know, you're a law and order guy, and this doesn't necessarily fall under the purview of the uh, Public Service Commission, but I want to get your comments on that anyway. I said uh, previously, on the, before you came on the show, I was talking about constitutional sheriff and how vital it is to have a constitutional sheriff. Um, if you can talk about that a little bit, folks, you, you, you talk about, or you can, Randy, talk about that. We talk about elected representatives, but one of the key positions in any county is the, is the, uh, is the county sheriff. And as I stated previously, I think it's very important that people do the research and try to, try to uh, vote in constitutional sheriffs uh, whenever you can, because they're the ones, the sheriff's the one stands between the citizens and the government. At least that's how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to stand in there and they're supposed to actually protect the citizens from the, the, the you know government tyranny. And I just played a video here earlier in Yellowstone County. It looks like the sheriff now in Yellowstone County and his deputies are actually participating in the tyranny. So uh, it's vital to have a constitutional sheriff. Can you comment on that for us, Commissioner? Again, folks, if you want to call in to uh, ask a question to Commissioner Panucci, 563-999-3617. What's your thoughts on a constitutional sheriff, uh, Commissioner, and how important that is? James, I just sent you a photo of a book. Uh, It's coming to you right now called The Proper Role of Law Enforcement. Everybody, it's written by Richard Mack or Sheriff Mack. Uh, He is a leading, um, you know, uh, you know, teacher of how a sheriff's role should be done. He actually has a a membership to join his group and uh, folks I'm a life member and Sheriff Mack has a book that explains the importance of the sheriff really making sure he does his his role properly for instance if the FBI comes to town and they want to do an investigation on an individual they really have a responsibility to 
check in with the sheriff's department to let them know they're conducting an investigation in his county, okay? If they don't, uh, that really is not legal. Some sheriffs don't want to know or don't care. And uh, things can go wrong where a sheriff may have somebody working undercover, and then the FBI comes in and uh, they do an arrest and shoot the guy who's undercover, and there's a failure to follow the proper role. People, you need to understand the sheriff is an elected official. The FBI is not. And your top uh, authority in the county is your elected sheriff. And some of these sheriffs don't want to tangle with the ATF when they come to town or FBI, and they need to do their job. They need to accept their role. The sheriffs in most counties are saying they will not make an arrest if you are not wearing a mask. They feel that's unconstitutional. Uh, the governor really wants those arrests to be made. We had, I, I was able to get an individual who was arrested in Great Falls for not wearing a mask, and we had him on this very show. Then the sheriff showed up on, the, on this very show, uh, Jesse Slaughter, saying he wasn't aware of it and wouldn't have made that arrest, and apparently a judge did. And this is how confusing law can be. And the sheriff's really got a responsibility to keep one eye on the Constitution well, as he enforces well, law. Well, t technically, technically, Commissioner, the legislatures are the ones that make the laws. So just a, a dictate by the governor is not we don't live in a dictate we don't live in a dictatorship that you know well it is a tyranny but it's it's not supposed to be this is not like fiat he can't rule by fiat he can't just make a proclamation and make it law that has to be done by the legislature so this whole thing's not even a law and i know he has certain powers for a limited period of time maybe 30 days may have emergency powers but after that you know uh that's what they did they struck that down in michigan so there's there's a lot of speaking of the law uh, Commissioner, there's a lot of lawlessness going on where they're not following the law, and this happens all the time. Um, if you can, we're just going to wind down the interview here, Commissioner. Go ahead and give us any – or how about this? Is there anything that you wanted to speak about or any topic that you wanted to bring up or perhaps a question that I didn't get a chance to ask you or failed to ask you during the interview that you want to cover right now? Over to you. Oh, there's – we went over so much today, I'd need an hour, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about what we, what we just are working on. When you swear in as a representative or a senator or a public service commissioner, I've raised my right hand, and I really have to swear to two constitutions, and most people don't know this. The U.S. Constitution and the state constitution. And folks, I don't mean to confuse you, but sometimes the legislature will try to pass a law and, and will pass a law that's unconstitutional. For instance, down in Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina, uh, law enforcement was going around and taking your guns. They said, do you have a gun? He said, yes, well, we're going to take it. That was against the Constitution that they swore to uphold. And sometimes the sheriff is faced with this. I'm going to take a stand against what the legislature passed. And uh, that gets pretty confusing. But, folks, I'm back to this. This government is your government, and you get the government you deserve. You have to make sure if a legislature tr tries to pass a law that's not constitutional to the state or this country, you've got to get rid of them. And this sort of thing, it's happening all over the country, and we've got to keep an eye on it. And something else, folks, judges are – making law from the bench instead of interpreting the law in that state. Oh, yeah. And oh, we yeah. really got to watch those judges a lot closer. Judicial activism is a, uh, uh, is a, is a serious problem in just about every state, Commissioner. I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, where can people find out more about you, um, Commissioner, and how can people get in contact with you if anybody has any questions as far as, you know, uh, PSC stuff, um, you know, uh, rates or, or any, I know you guys are pretty open there and, you know, there's nothing hidden. I know you, you do talk to the folks all the time. How can people find out more about you, um, commissioner and where they can find out more about the public service commission specifically? Folks, I'm going to give you my personal cell phone. This isn't the commission's cell phone. It's my personal cell phone because you may have a question for me that could be about anything. One, 
406-231-3649. People call me all the time about anything. Uh, and I can usually direct you to where you can get an answer if I don't have a good one for you. I welcome any call. Uh, you can join me on Facebook, uh, Randy Pinocchi. I have three Facebooks. I have one for the legislature, one for the Public Service Commission, and then my personal one. Uh, join me at the personal one and then follow me at the other two. And please keep in touch with James White. He has a, a great page. And also this show could be emailed to anyone you'd like. Um, uh, James White has uh, uh, the ability to have this show where you can email it to your friends or post it on Facebook. And so if you miss the show or you're trying to explain it to someone, uh, you know, just email a show. Commissioner Pinochet, so much appreciate you being on the broadcast with us as always. And uh, we, um, you know, as things continue to move forward here, and I know the, the, the 2021 legislative session will be starting there in January, and um, we'll probably have, I'm sure, you on the show before then. And we always appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come here on the broadcast with us, Commissioner. Thanks so very much. Thanks for having me, Jim. You're quite welcome. Okay, folks, there goes Commissioner Randy Pinochet, Montana Public Service Commission. We always, of course, again, appreciate him coming here, uh, coming on the broadcast with us. And uh, you can, uh, he's one of the good guys here in Montana politics. And uh, we have a lot of them here on the show. And uh, we're so thankful and appreciative of all the folks, that, you know, especially, well, I'm, I'm familiar with the Flathead guys because I'm here in the Flathead, but uh, there's great legislators all across the state. We had uh, one on earlier, Brad Cheetah. Folks, this is going to come in on the broadcast here. I've got a couple other things here that I need to, i got another show coming up at noon and some folks coming by the studio here like any time. So it's a good time for me to end the show now. Uh, I do appreciate you looking in here. You can uh, support us by going to MontanaGazetteRadio.com, MontanaGazetteRadio.com, or MontanaDailyGazette.com, or, of course, the flagship NorthwestLibertyNews.com. Um, support independent news, folks. The, uh, they're really the only ones bringing the truth. It's not me. Support others because we're, we're you know, basically we're the, we're the only truth tellers left. The mainstream media is in the bag for the, uh, for the left, and we can see that. And uh, I think it's pretty apparent. Something but propaganda, misinformation, and just out, flat out lies. So thanks so much for that. We appreciate it. Um, tune in to uh, the program. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, a couple of the guests that we talked about earlier on the, the, the two headline stories. Uh, really, on Montana Daily Gazette right now, I'll have both those people on the show tomorrow. I know we do appreciate you looking in, 9 a.m. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back at noon with my Critical Disclosure broadcast. If you're interested in that, Pam Olson will be on the show. I'll be sending that announcement out soon. Thanks again for looking in. Till next time, this is James White for Montana Gazette Radio saying bye now.